Hello everyone, welcome to AJ Programming Solutions. So in today's video, we are going to create a Spring Boot project and we will connect that Spring Boot project to our MySQL database by using Spring Data JPA. Okay, so very first let's create a simple project. So I have opened my STS tool. Okay, so here you can just go to the file, click on this new. Okay, and here you will find one option Spring Starter Project. So we will create a Spring Starter Project. So click on this. Now if you see here, you are getting this project from this start.spring.io website. Okay, so in the STS you can create this way, otherwise you can directly go to the website, okay, this website and then from there you can create the project. Okay, so now for now let's create the project here itself. So you can give any name to your project, okay, so maybe we can give the name as uh, Spring Boot uh, Data JPA Project. Okay, so we can give the name like this. Okay, then you have to select the type, which type of project you want to create. Okay, so here I want to create the Maven project. So here we will be keep as a Maven. Then Java version, which version you want to use for this project creation. Okay, so we will keep it as a 17. You can change it from here itself. Okay, so for now let's keep as a 17. Then you can give the group. Okay, then artifact version will be by default. Okay, description you can give anything and this will be your package. Okay, so now let's let's click on this next. And here currently if you see we are using Spring Boot 3.1.2 version. Okay, so now here you need to add the required dependency. Whatever dependencies are required for your project, you can add those dependencies. Okay, so now we are going to create this uh, Spring Boot project and we want to connect this to the MySQL by using Spring Data JPA. Okay, so here we need two dependencies. Very first dependency is this one, Spring Data JPA. Okay, so you can just search here. Spring Data JPA. See here, you are getting the dependency Spring Data JPA. So you can just click on this. Okay, now I need one more dependency which is my SQL driver. So my SQL driver. See here, you can click on this. Okay, so for now only two dependencies are required Spring Data JPA and my SQL driver. Okay, now click on the next. Okay. And now click on the finish. Now your starter project will get created. Okay, so let, let the project uh, create. Okay, now it's created. I think see here. This is our spring starter project. Okay, now if you see here, we have one folder source main Java. Okay, and inside this com.springdatajpa is our package. And here one file got created. Okay, so this is our main file or we can say that our project will start from here because this file contains the main method. Okay, so this will be the starter point. Okay, now one more folder is there which is resources and inside this resources we have one file which is application.properties file. So in this file we will provide all the properties. Okay, and now Third important thing is we have to check this pom.xml file. See here, in this pom.xml file, we have added two dependencies. Okay, so one is a Spring Boot Starter Data JPA and another is MySQL Connector. Okay, now this uh, test dependencies are defaulted. So let's keep that as it is. Okay, so for now, only two dependencies are there in our pom.xml file. Okay, now let's go here okay now what is what is the like what is the um, task now task is that we need to connect this application to the mysql database okay so very first let's go to the mysql database okay so this is my mysql database workbench now inside this workbench i need to create the database okay so you can just right click here and click on this create schema and here you need to create the schema 
okay so now let's suppose we want to create the schema um, employee db okay so this is my schema name you can give any name okay close so now our employee schema got created and now if you see here we don't have any table okay now what i want let's go to this one the sts tool okay and from this application i want to connect to that employee database okay so now for that we need to do some configuration okay and all the configuration we will do inside this application dot properties file okay so very first one or very first thing we need to provide some details right what details we have to provide like you want to connect to which database okay so what will be the url what will be the username and what will be the password okay so these are some basic details we need to provide okay so let's let's go ahead and give that details okay very first thing what we have to give url okay so you just uh, you just type here uh, spring or we can just type maybe data source okay see here spring data source dot url okay then we have to write data source dot name okay so here you can give the username and then maybe uh, spring dot data source dot password uh wait uh data source dot password okay so here we have to give url then data source name and then password okay so url we will give our mysql database url okay so let's give it here jdbc colon mysql then we have to write colon slash slash local host and then we have to give the mysql port okay so it will be the default port as 3306 and then here you have to give your schema name or your database name okay so now i have created the schema as employee db okay so we can give that schema name here okay so jdbc colon then mysql colon slash slash localhost colon then whatever will be your port so default mysql port will be 3306 and then your schema name now here you have to provide the username okay so username will be root and password will be root pass underscore 1234 okay so you can give your username and your your password okay now save this go to our main application this is our main application okay now right click and just run this application so run as you can click on the java application or you can click on the spring boot app okay so our application will just start here now let's see what happen okay see here now our application is started okay so see here application is started now if you see what happened here okay we have connected to the mysql database see here if you see in the logs we are connected to the mysql database okay now internally this is using hibernate because see we have added the data jpa in the pom.xml but data jpa internally use the hibernate okay so here it is using the hibernate and version will be 6.2.6 okay now we have connected to the database okay but now if you go here see in our mysql if we go the table is not created right so let's let's create the uh, table so what we will do now here we will create one entity okay and we will try to create the same table okay in the database okay so let's 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 go here right click new class okay so here i want to create the employee class okay and here maybe we can give the package name as a entity 
because this employee will be the entity okay so click on the finish now as this employee is an entity you can just add the annotation at the rate entity okay now inside this employee i want to store some data so private int id then private string name of the employee okay so here we have to give string and then private um, double salary of the employee okay so these are three fields which i want to store in the database okay so now uh, let's create the getter and setter for this very first okay so right click go to the source and here you have the option generate getter and setter okay so click on that select all the fields and click on the generate okay then we will create the constructor so same way go to the source here you have the option generate a constructor using fields okay so i will create the parameterized constructor with name and salary i don't want to include the id okay why i don't want to include the id i will tell okay so here let's have one default constructor now we have created this entity now the task is that we want to store this id or we want to create the table with name employees okay and in that table i want to create the columns like id name and salary okay and i want this to generate automatically okay now to generate all these things automatically what you have to do you have to use some annotations okay so see here very first to create the employee table we need to use the annotation at the rate table see here and this table annotation is coming from jakarta dot persistence okay so now if you are adding at the rate table then what will happen the table will get created okay now if you are not providing any name here then by default the project by default the table will get created with this class name only this e will be in the small letter okay but if you want to create your own a uh, table then you can just write here name and you can give the name of the table let's suppose i want to give the name of the table as a employees okay so now employees table will get created now what i want i want this id as a column okay and i want this id as a primary key for that you have to use the annotation at the rate id okay and i don't want to create the id by myself right i want to create this id automatically every time by the mysql database itself okay so for that we can use one annotation generated value okay and here inside this sorry here you can use at the rate generated value and here you have to give the strategy as a identity okay we have different strategies but for now let's give it as a identity okay now i want to create this name also as a column so for that we can use at the rate column annotation okay and here also you can just write at the rate column okay now all the things are done okay now if we save and go to the main application and right click and run as a java application then let's see if that table got created or not okay so see here okay our application got started and if i go to the database okay so table is not get created yet okay so now let's go here and uh, one more thing we need to do okay so see we have created the entity we have added all the annotations but we need to configure some properties okay so that the jpa will get to know that all these things needs to be created by automatically okay so here in the application dot properties file you just have to write some more properties okay so very first property is that 
DDL ATO. Okay, so see here this DDL ATO property we have to make it as create. Okay, so what will happen now? All the like whatever you have see here in the employee you have created this table and you have added all these annotations so now if you are adding this property then automatically the table will get created with all those three columns okay now one more thing i want to do i want to show all the sql whatever sql is hibernate generating behind the scene i just want to show that that uh, this one the sqls okay or that scripts okay so for that you can write show sql okay and here you have to make it as a true now what will happen whatever are the scripts generated behind the scene that scripts will be displayed in your console okay so now we have like saved this application go to your main file and right click and run as a spring boot app now what will happen see here okay in the console we will get see what happens something new we got right see here very first hibernate is trying to drop the table if exist which table employees okay and then it is creating the table employee with the id then salary and then name okay so here primary key is id okay now if i go to the mysql okay and if i just refresh this see here in the tables you will get this employee table see here and inside this employee table you have id salary and name okay so this way we can create the Spring Boot application, okay, and connect to the MySQL database, okay. So now one more thing is that why it is dropping the table because see here we have mentioned in the application dot properties that hibernate dot detail dot auto create create means what it will every time it will create the table, okay. So if already the table is there then it will drop that table and again it will create the new table okay that's the reason you are uh, getting here drop table if exist and after that it is creating new table okay so this way we can create the spring boot application and connect it to the mysql database using spring data jpa okay for today's video that's it if you like this video, please share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel. Thank you.